Good morning, you guys. We're here in Inaru, Papua New Guinea. We just landed to drop off a lawnmower here. Uh, standing water everywhere. I flew over it a couple times. It's been raining, I guess, since yesterday. But yeah, flew over a couple times just to make sure I could hopefully take back off. We're dropping it off. We don't have that much coming out of here, maybe 200 kgs. So we've got like a seven knot headwind um, on landing. We're heading up to Weewak now. Um, it looks like the weather's clearing. Wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to even get in here with all the lightning and rain from earlier this morning on the way out here. These guys are gonna show them how to start the lawnmower because it's a little bit different than theirs and then we'll hopefully get out of here. So before we head out, what I did is I loaded up, took out all the weight from my front pod, put it in my second pod, then loaded up more weight in my hat rack, moved the seats back, and my two passengers are actually gonna be sitting further back just to get as much weight off the front nose wheel as I possibly can. Cause let me show you this puddle up here. And that's just indication what, maybe not all of this is like, but standing water probably three inches back there. So I'll be airborne well clear of this huge puddle right here. But man, yeah, that's pretty big. And hitting your nose wheel with that just slows you down so much. But the reason why I did land, my thinking, was the grass was really low. And I flew over it twice just looking to see how much water was on here. And I know that this place, if you get off center line, it'll just pull you right off because it's very soft on the sides. I've been stuck here once, another pilot's been stuck here before two or three times all together. So that's something that I'm really considering as I land down at some of these bush locations like Inaru. And now to taxi to the end without getting stuck. I have been stuck here before. Like I was saying, you get off center line just a few feet, it gets very soft. So I walked up and down, found the least wet area. And hopefully this will work. Or do you feel it's really draggy? Really draggy. And lots of power. Get up and out, back onto the center line, there we go. All right, sweet. Oh, really soft right here, really soft. We got a 500 kg penalty coming out of here. I bumped it up to 700 kgs as a penalty. And um, we, can just, we can just get out of here with that penalty today as long as we don't get stuck. And this end of the runway is a lot firmer than the other end of the runway. Oh, my wheel's getting stuck. Come on, you can do it. There we go. All right, there we go. Ugh. Right, so we have sense selectors. We'll turn Taz off. We're going up to 7,000 if the weather allows. We'll be rotating at 56 knots today with a really good um, abort procedure as far as our speed. If we're not up to speed, 56. So, all right, if we're not, not 40 knots by that little log where those kids are standing, then I'm going to abort seemed fairly firm enough and to stop on it. Like 40 knots from there, I think we'll be all right. After takeoff, we'll pitch 35 knots, consider APL. Left-hand turn just to follow the river, find a sandbar, hopefully. Pull 
off and shut off. 85, then 80 full flaps, masters crack my door. Tell these guys to brace. All right, ignition flaps are indicated and verified. Our trim, it's called uh, Moresby. Moresby 6598, November Tango Kilo Taxi. Turn off my igniters so they don't hear that. Moresby November Tango Kilo Taxi Nadu Wewak. Three November Tango Kilo, Nadu, Wewak. We'll be on climb 7,000. November Tango Kilo, taxiing on Nadu, Wewak. We'll be on climb 7,000. 26 degrees, so 1680. 1630 for 1680. Ignition condition flaps 20. Fuel and harnesses. Checklist is complete. Oh, this is a true, true soft fuel takeoff. All right, 40 knots by that point. 1630. Right, accelerating well. There's 40. Lower the nose. There's 56 and airborne. No, lower the nose. And I'll climb on out at 73. There we go. That's always stressful. All right, well, now that we're over 500, we'll pitch on over over to 85 so we can get our flaps out. Looks like all the rain and buildups that were on the way to WeWack have already cleared out, which is really nice. This day is a long day. I've got these guys behind me there, some of our mechanics um, for our mission. They work on like lawn mowers and things like that for us. So they dropped this one off, showed these guys how to use it. Going to the WeWack, heading out to Sotomi, taking you guys out there a few times, and we're fixing the lawn mower out there. So if you want to watch a video on that, check out the, my Patreon link down below. I'll shoot a video because I'm going to have like an hour of doing nothing out there. Well, glad to get that one done. It looks like the weather is actually improving quite a bit, which is really great. Motors V6598, November Tango, Kilo, departure. November Tango, Kilo, motion, go ahead. November Tango, Kilo, departed Inadu, time 52, tracking 284. Correction, tracking 032 on climb 7000, estimating Garoka time 32, or correction, we whack 32. <laughs> and seem to speak today, get my thoughts. November Tango, Echo 1, climb 7000, no reported traffic. November Tango, Kilo. He said Echo, but he knows who I am. All right, get our towels back enabled. So what I did is, um, as far as my thought process on getting out of there, in case you're wondering, and with standing water and things like that, that will slow you down a ton on takeoff, is I quickly ran a weight and balance and got my aft CG like, as far back as I possibly could, still remaining within the envelope. So I took out everything underneath my pod, put it in the second pod, and then I also filled up my hat rack with as much weight as I basically could. Um, just a couple kgs under. I moved these guys back far enough um, and then put both of them back there instead of having one up here front. And that basically just reduces the weight on the front wheel and it makes my job easier being able to hold the nose wheel off the ground on takeoff. Yeah, you can, but it's going to take you longer and more airspeed to be able to get the nose wheel up and out of the wet grass and out of the standing water if you have a lot of weight, whereas if it's a aft CG, you can just pull back and it, you can just feel the front nose like lift off almost as you start rolling. So that was my thinking on taking off out of there. And like I said, I flew over it two times at like 10 feet off the ground just to look at it, just go, okay, is this worth my time landing here? Am I gonna get stuck or not? And it, thankfully it was, it was firm enough. So we're on to WeeWAC. Sitting on the ground out here, probably 45 minutes has actually cleared out the weather pretty well here up here in Wewak, which is great because earlier it was overcast and kind of rainy all along the way. So I'm happy with that. 
we've got some lightning strikes all out over the water near Weewak, but it looks like it's just those clouds that are all built up way out there, about another 10 minutes or 10 miles past Weewak. The chime just letting you know that we're 200 feet yet to go, up to 7,000. Just use when I'll like remember to hit my altitude select and my vertical speed button together, and that way the autopilot will just level off on its own. If you don't do that, it'll just continue on flying right on through your 7,000, but this autopilot doesn't have a an airspeed hold, so you really have to just trim it out unless you want to just continually click this down every like 30 seconds or so, which is just kind of annoying. So now that our speed's up over 130 indicated, we'll start bringing our torque back to 1250 for our cruise setting. If you guys are a flight simmer and you guys want to learn how to fly the Kodiak, um, if you just got like the SimWorks Kodiak for Microsoft Flight Sim or you have um, another one for X-Plane, uh, I've got a link down below where I did a course on basically everything that I know of on the Kodiak, um, how to how I take off, how I land, for cruising, setting up cruise, descents. Um, it has a lot of information on how to use the G1000. So if you're interested in learning more about this stuff, check that link out down below. Yeah, kind of an overall scuzzy day today. With the high high overcast that we have, I think it's gonna hold off a lot of weather from building up. We had a lot of rain overnight. Now it's just kind of lingering ground fog and some lower le level clouds. You guys can see all these lightning strikes right here that are all happening. Uh, I'm not sure if I think what they are is they're just a lot of the close layered clouds, but you know, it looks like I'm even seeing kind of the ridge line out to the coast out here off to the left a little bit. So I think they're just the clouds that are kind of these lower kind of cumulus looking clouds. If you guys are interested in seeing the strip chart for WeeWAC, uh, yeah, 5,200 feet, just about a mile long, and runway 10 and 28. So we'll probably land on runway 10. This time of year, the winds always seem to be coming, um, really kind of from the east southeast. We'll be flying overhead, enter into a left downwind, and land that way. I've been doing some work on it lately. Um, the past six months, they were working on the end of 2.8, and now they've swapped to runway 1.0. I think what they're just doing is resurfacing it and uh, potentially widening it a little bit, I think. Well, it's not, it's not looking quite as clear as I was thinking. It's looking pretty clear out here. It might just be a little bit of cloud and some moisture in front between me and the coastline. I was kind of expecting it to be a little bit better visibility what I'm seeing right here. Well, minimum saves 3,100 feet. I'm expecting that it's gonna clear up and I'm gonna eventually see the coastline. I think it's just hazy enough to where I don't see anything right now. As I'm getting a little bit closer into WeeWack, it looks like it's starting to clear up. We've got kind of like a scuzzy layer, maybe around 4,500 to 5,000, but I'm still getting like, you know, 10 miles visibility hazy, but I'm still getting 10 miles of visibility. So I think as we get a little bit closer, we should have no issues getting in. I think they were saying about an hour ago that it was just a high overcast, and that's kind of what it's looking like way up in that area. So the reason I'm saying this is just because we do have a couple of uh, instrument approaches, but they're kind of way out that way and way out that way, which work really great if you're an airliner. You can go like, you know, 180 knots or something, but just going to add five extra minutes to my flight if I have to go way out there and I don't really want to do that. One of these fields kind of down in this area, I think it's actually a little bit over that way, there's actually a World War II airplane that I've flown over. I've showed you guys, I've tried to show you guys a couple of times, and the, one, the last time I had my 360 cameras, finally I'm like, yes, this is going to be awesome. I'll be able to get like a great view of it, both of them. But these 360 cameras, they're Insta360s, they work great, but the only thing I don't like about it is after 30 minutes, um, like the GoPros seamlessly just keep recording and like they're recording like eight minute segments. Those record in a 30 minute, 30 minute segment, but then it stops recording for one full minute before it starts recording again, which I don't really like. Anyways, 
The time I flew over to show you guys was in that one minute section exactly, and I missed the airplane yet again. So that's happened so many times. It's like I tried showing you a volcano once, exact same thing. The camera stopped exactly when I got to the volcano, and I wasn't able to show you guys. Now that we're 30 miles out of WEWAC, we're going to make an area call. All stations WEWAC, 126 decimal 7, Kodiak November Tango, Kilo, 30 miles on the 210 radial 7000, estimating WEWAC time 23. November Tango, Kilo Mosby, confirm your estimate WEWAC now 23. Affirmative 23, November Tango, Kilo. I think I told them 33 or something. November Tango, Kilo. Vertical track. All right, now is my time to head on down. I'm just going to hold my altitude just for a couple extra minutes. I think it's going to probably open up more into like a scattered to broken up here in a second instead of just more of a thick broken to overcast. It'll just make my life easier getting down. Well, I'm thinking that it's going to just start dropping off this way, so I'm going to hit my heading button, turn my autopilot on a heading mode, and then just start turning out this way because the clouds look like they drop off this way. I'm going to start my descent just so I don't have to have like a thousand foot descent with these guys here in a second. So let's just go autopilot off, it'll be a little easier. But what I look for is I see this cloud right here and then I see a bunch of clouds way further on out. So what that makes me believe or think is that this is kind of the last cloud and then it just probably drops off down towards the coast and then those further ones out there are um, like all the storms that are giving all the lightning on the screen. And yeah, even just right here, I've already got better visibility underneath. I'm just going to continue on maybe a 700 foot descent. I get kind of down below this broken layer and then I think underneath it's just going to be really hazy, but I don't think it's going to have any rain per se. But we'll set up our minimum safe. Always good just to have that in there. Then have your autopilot on altitude select. So you have vertical speed here in green and then you have altitude select in white. So once you get to the altitude that you have in here, 3100, then it will level itself off in case you're busy, you forget, you're not paying attention or whatever. Uh, looks like about the same everywhere, so I might as well just head direct to WeWAC. It's nice with the G1000, this little cyan arc right there. That lets you know when you're going to get to your pre-selected altitude. It really makes your descent planning so easy. Like I used to fly the air van and you didn't have anything like that and you had to do all the math like it's this many miles to go and I'm going to be descending at 500 feet per minute so that's going to be this many minutes before I get there to make that descent. It's, it's such a huge pain in the butt. Let's see. It is a little bit thicker than I was thinking it was going to be. We got just a ton of build up right here. I don't want to get have to get caught in it at 3,100 feet and then not be able to get back down over top of the field because I'm not sure if it's just just right here or if it continues on over top of it. So I want to land on runway 10. I'm going to level off for just a second at 5,000 and reevaluate kind of my best aim plan. It looks quite a bit clearer out to the southeast. I'm going to go this way. That's more direct towards WeWAC. Actually, no, I'm seeing the coastline, I think, now. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing the coastline. All those big clouds out there I'm looking at are out over the water, so there we go. All stations of WeWAC, 1267 over 10 kilo, 8 miles to the west, leaving 5,000 on descent. Circuit 23 will be flying overhead for a left downwind runway 10 WeWAC. Just a lot closer than I thought I was. Let's try to keep our descent at a thousand feet. Just because we have passengers. I'll just bring my torque on back. Get a lot of left rudder pressure in here. As you start pulling power out and start descending, your speed goes up. You just kind of basically take out the right rudder pressure or put in left, however you want to think of it. Well, looking out that way, it looks about the same as here. I, I don't know if it's necessarily rain. I think it's just a bunch of clouds and haziness the perception that there's a lot of rain. I'll look at the satellite before we head out that way. Get our fuel on and start going up with our checklist. Selectors, TAWS, our VREF. 
5,500, so 64 knots at the slowest. Lights, inlet, power up 20 degrees, pitch for 73, reset torque at I, or reset our torque and our ITT at 740, but we'll watch our torque because we're at sea level. We can over torque these things super fast at sea level. Up and harness, we'll get prop here in a second. Because this is an uncontrolled airspace, um, it used to have a tower here many years before my time. But we'll fly overhead, enter into a left downwind, come back around, and then land halfway down. So we'll adjust our pattern just a bit because we're not landing the 500 foot marker like I normally do here, just like so get off the first taxiway. We'll actually be landing closer to the second taxiway. And one really cool, interesting thing, I've mentioned this before, but there's actually bomb craters all along the um, the right side of the runway. World War II, I have a video of actually when the Americans came here and bombed um, this same airstrip. I'll see if I can remember to leave the link below. It's like a little eight minute documentary, World War II documentary, with actual footage of them coming in and Dropping bombs all in this area. It's just really, they came right over top of these hills over here. It's its so interesting, I think. Stations Wewak, Nova Prankilo joining the circuit. Wewak, break. Moresby, Nova Prankilo in the circuit. Wewak, cancel SAR. Nova Prankilo, Wewak, SAR, terminated. Thank you, Nova Prankilo. It actually looks like they might have finished the work on the runway. It's been a, probably a month or so since I've been here at least. I don't see any more X's. Well, I see one X up by the throw. Nope, those are numbers. Uh, maybe they did actually open it up. I know they were getting close. Yeah, all that rain and storm and lightning stuff, it's only like 10 miles off the coast, but it just stays off the coast. It doesn't actually come any closer. Very rarely does it ever actually move in. Yeah, I don't see any more X's. Looks like they've opened up the whole thing. Make sure the taxiway and everything is opened up. It's pretty wet out there, though. They have been getting a lot of rain. Yep, taxiway's open, so the whole runway's open. Awesome. All right, 10 degrees of flaps. Getting a little bit low for my pattern. We'll climb on back up to 1,000 feet. There you go, there's 1,000. We're gonna go out to this point right here and then enter our downwind. If you do your pattern the exact same every single time, especially if you're flying at the same location that you fly to, you can really increase your skills because it's anything that you can do the same every time, it's just going to free your brain up to actually be able to focus on the things that it actually needs to. That's what I've done, and that's really um, helped me progress in being a pilot. It's coming up with flows, things, every you do things every time exactly the same, and it will you will become a better pilot. Bring a torque back to maybe 400 foot pound of torque today. It looks like we'll have a you know, eight to 10 knot quartering headwind. Drop it down to 700 feet here at 1.6 nautical miles. We'll turn our base. There's 1.6, there's 700. Then also I just know it's right at this pier right here is also just where I turn. But 74 knots, so I'm gonna reduce my power here at my base. That helps me slow down. Then just kind of, as the nose kind of wants to drop, we're just gonna pitch up a little bit, that will slow us down also. We wanna turn final 500. Oh, I'm already there, so I'm just gonna hold my altitude for a second. I'll say, so we whack no, but particular kilo turning final 1-0, we whack. Oh, full flaps, checklist is complete, there's 500. Start my turn so I don't over fly my airline. And we're slowing to 64 knots. And we'll go for the 500 foot mark. That way we can stop without really using much brakes by the front. 500. Okay, now it's a headwind. We're shooting for 550 feet on our descent. The Kodiak, that gets you a really nice profile coming down, keeps your inertia coming, pushing you down into the ground so you can get on the ground right when you want to. It looks like I'm doing about 600 right now.
if you can get your V-Ref exactly where you want it, that also will help your landing and be able to touch down right where you want to. Oh, this runway is a lot nicer now that they've finished off the top again. I hope you guys enjoyed that flight. Kind of crummy weather out today. That's a long, long day yet to go. But as always, give this video a thumbs up. It really does help um, with the YouTube algorithm. Share the video with your friends. If you know someone else or forums or whatever that might enjoy this kind of content, feel free to share it. It definitely helps my channel grow. If you'd like to support the channel, you can become a patron and get all those kinds of extra ex exclusive stuff like the video I'm going to be shooting out there today at Sort of Me with the lawnmower. So see you guys next time and welcome here to WeWack. Yeah.